Um, can you please just tell us about the expulsion of, of NUMSA? There's been a lot of communication, I mean, miscommunication, confusion, and a lot of speculations from us as the public. Uh, it's never quite clear what happened there. And of course, um, if you could assist us by starting with the 2012 um, National Congress, which debated the NDR. Well, I think if we were to take a view about where the Federation come from since it was launched in 1985, I would concur with what you're saying that basically the expulsion of NUMSA is indeed the setback to the working class in the, in the 21st century that we had to deal with. But as we, everybody would agree, Fidel Castro once warned everyone to say sometimes great problems delivers great solutions. And in this case, I think what this expulsion has exposed is the propaganda that the South African Communist Party and the clique within COSATU and, and, and the African National Congress have embarked upon to actually have a project within the Federation to hollow it out of its revolutionary content, its militancy, its independency. You would appreciate that for some time towards the 12th Congress, 11th Congress of, of COSATU you, you're speaking about, we have a sustained campaign where basically there has been different views where we, with statistics that are glaring in front of us, we have been able to prove that the National Democratic Revolution, which brought us together, led by the African National Congress in the context of the alliance, has been basically off track. In that conference, for the first time in history, unprecedented, we had a situation where Zuelin Zimavavi presented a report, a report which was scientific about the state and conditions of the working class in the country. There were those unions, including NUMSA, who firmly believed that indeed the National Democratic Revolution was off track. There was deepening inequality, poverty, unemployment, which was worsening in the country with serious levels of deindustrialization. And there were those who basically firm we took a very firm stance that, look, if you were to say that, you're basically undermining the African National Congress. And uh, we saw the Secretary General of the ANC taking the platform, suggesting in a conference of workers that workers must not endorse the report. He was followed by the South African Communist Party, Solima Paile. We had to think on our feet. And we had to defend a report which was a product of all CCs, because Zuelin Zemavavi preparing that report he basically consulted all affiliates and we all agreed that that's, that's the, that was the report that was to be debated in that conference. After that, we have to be confronted with a situation where now we must roll out a program. I think we can say that the 11th Congress of COSAD was indeed a watershed Congress in the sense that it emerged with a solid program, campaigns. We needed to create what we called a Freedom Charter moment. Some called it a Lula moment, where we said we must go to the street to fight for full implementation of the Freedom Charter, to challenge the Reserve Bank focus on inflation targeting instead of focusing on job creation to make sure that the whole question of ownership and control of the economy is basically being addressed. And um, Stumont Lamini, in opening the first CC, he refused that we can have a program that can be implemented because he argued that there were those affiliates who basically opposed his election. We said, sorry, President, yes, that was the case because we had a problem with you. There's always a consistent two voices in the Federation. You got Zuelin Zimavav who continue to champion the interests of the working class, but you continue not being sure whether you speak for workers, whether you speak for the SACP, whether you speak for the ANC. And I mean, we persuaded him to say, listen, we must accept that workers have spoken, you are all back into the leadership, lead us in implementing the program. So I do want to argue that the issue of NUMSA's expulsion doesn't start with the NUMSA in 2013, December having taken those resolutions. In fact, when we realized that indeed they were not prepared to implement the program of the Federation. One third of COSATU affiliates following the constitution of COSATU, they basically petitioned the president of COSATU. And according to that constitution, once he is petitioned, all what he need to do is to convene the special Congress, give a notice for 14 days, something he completely refused 
uh, to, 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 to execute. And as such, NUMSA, when we finally went to our own special national congress, and there were glaring issues that made us to take the resolution that, are as a resu that have led to our expulsion. The first one, the ANC adoption of the national development plan was the last straw for us. In the sense that we were there, we were, we were invited. In fact, when the ANC said publicly, it is calling for festival of ideas, it's inviting us to a national policy conference. We participated in that, in that national policy conference. And two commissions basically endorsed that we must nationalize strategic minerals. In other words, we must address issues of ownership and control of the economy and champion manufacturing and industrialization. In a distance from those commissions to the plenary, the leadership of the ANC unilaterally outside a democratic process is both in the ANC and in the alliance. They basically added condition to change those resolution that nationalization can only happen if it is appropriate to do so, if there is a balance of evidence to do so. And we were shocked. And um, we saw people physically beating each other up in, in, the, in, in that national policy conference. In Mangao, basically all what the president of the ANC suggested was that, listen, the NDP is a serious document. It must be, that conference cannot end. And we debated, we rejected the NDP, and uh, we saw people pushing for its adoption, and it was adopted without any consultation of the alliance. Secondly, all everything else that had to do with nationalization, they pressed delete control. It was removed, and this was done by leadership. And as we were going to our, our own special national congress, we had to honestly reflect on the adoption of a neoliberal agenda, which was the NDP, which maintained the status quo of the dominance of white monopoly capital in the economy, privatization of roads, we got it alls in Johannesburg, mm -hmm. refusal to ban labor brokers, introduction unilaterally of youth wage subsidy, where basically the job of workers who have been in the, in the industry are under threat, and metal workers decided. And they didn't say those who like to vote for the ANC must not. They simply said their union will not spend its, their dues in campaigning for the ANC. Secondly, they said because Dumudlamini has failed to convene the Special National Congress, we should not be paying dues. And I must tell you that we didn't implement that resolution. But we are expelled. You continue to pay your dues. We, we are an affiliate in, in good standing. Now we are expelled. Eh? <laughs> but we continue to pay the, the dues. Secondly, workers said we should march to Kosatu. We didn't march uh, to Kosatu. Thirdly, we said we shall not continue to pay a political levy to a communist party that has gone public to suggest that it will directly intervene in Kosatu. It defined NUMSA and those who want an independent federation as a small lingering irritation which they will have that they have identified they will isolate and basically liquidate. Which you were in your rights to do. Yeah. Totally within your rights to do. The point here is, and it's very simple, it goes back to 1993 if we think about it, because the tactic of being in alliance with the Communist Party and the ANC was a pure political tactic. And in fact, in 1993, NUMSA argued that once the ANC became the government and therefore an employer, in fact, the biggest employer in the country, Kusatu should step aside from the alliance. NUMSA lost at that time, but that has always been the situation there. People thought they could somehow use, and that's part of the Communist Party's medium-term vision, to take over the leadership of the Communist Party, take over the leadership of the ANC, and gradually head up towards some sort of weird multi-class form of socialism, or whatever they call it. The point here is very simple. I've kept it with me. I carry it everywhere. That's the NUMSA, uh, that's the Kosatu co Constitution. Comrade Jim is perfectly correct. 3.3.2, if a third, and there was more than a third of affiliates in good standing call for a special national congress, it has to be called. And if the president fails, the CEC then has to put a coordinator in charge to call one. They've refused. It's been nearly a year and a half. So if anything flowing from there must be invalid, and the, the expulsion is invalid, what they have done, it's a business of political interference. You have five reasons given by Sudumo Dlamini for the expulsion of NUMSA. The first one being the break with the alliance. There is absolutely no requirement in this constitution to be a member of the alliance. In fact, uh, SASBO, the banking union, actually has a clause, and it's an affiliate in good standing, it has a clause in its constitution which says it cannot be affiliated to any political party, yet it's a member of the alliance. 
the same thing with all the the only vague possibility of the five reasons was poaching they said yes. part of the reason here goes back to Marikana where many of the miners who rebelled against NUM and the way it was be behaving turned to AMKU, which is in the Naktu Federation, but also many of them, and I remember speaking to you about that at the time, where you were getting worried about the number who were applying, because of what NUM was going to say, moved to NUMSA. NUMSA has always been on the minds. There has never been one industry, one union. You've had two separate nursing unions, the one has now been expelled, I understand, but also Nihawu that also organizes nurses. So what we have here is basic political interference of the worst kind of order. It's bad for the working class, it's bad for the economy, if you want to think about it in those senses. It's bad all around.